The situation on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland is that there is still a state of emergency announced by the civil protection. This is because there is magma underground very close to a populated area which was evacuated last Friday. Yeah, eruptions in this part of Iceland are fissure eruptions, so they erupt, erupt uh, basaltic magma. It can be just a flat area, but it kind of unzips, letting out magma. There's been uh, several streams of scientific data that told us that this magma was getting close to Brinkavik. So first of all, there was um, intense earthquake activity since end of October, with the largest one of magnitude 5.2 on Friday. Um, there was also satellite images that can actually measure whether the ground is inflating, and that was the case. The ground started to inflate really, really rapidly because the magma was coming up from depth. And most recently, there's been some detection of gases which are associated with volcanic eruptions. In general uh, terms, sulfur dioxide, or SO2, is a gas that is very abundant in magmas when they are erupting. There are um, still many uncertainties about what that means and what we can interpret from, from this detection. So the area that they scan is so large that they could actually be picking up sulfur dioxide from the lavas that were erupted last summer, about 10 kilometers away in an eruption that didn't harm anybody. But it was a very wise decision to play it safe and say, until we know more, we assume kind of the worst case scenarios, that the magma is close enough to the surface to be releasing this gas. We are in a cycle of new eruptions. So in this part of Iceland, there are several volcanic systems, but they seem to be linked in some way because they all erupt relatively at the same time every thousand years or so. And the last eruption cycle happened uh, nearly a thousand years ago. So there's been no eruptions for 800 years. And then in 2021, we got the first eruption. We didn't know at the time whether that was just a blip or whether we were going into this really active cycle again. And now it's pretty clear we are in this very active cycle again. And locally, the, the, these cycles are called um, Reykjanes fires. And once they start, they go on for decades or maybe centuries. So we could be going into um, these kind of eruptions for the rest of our lifetimes. Luckily, the eruptions that do happen in these fires, at least in sort of geologically recent past, are all quite small. Um, so if we're lucky, we will get mostly eruptions within uninhabited valleys like we had in 21 and 22 and earlier this year. It is not impossible though that like in the current situation magma might intrude under populated areas. I think it will be just assessed on a case-by-case -case basis um, but it is it is certainly not um, not something to be taken lightly and over the next decades or centuries the odds are that one town or another might be consumed by lava. They're building earth dams to try to divert lava flows away from a geothermal power plant because that is an important part of the infrastructure that's supplying hot water and electricity to the wider region. And uh, the idea is not to stop lava flows altogether, that's impossible, but just to divert them away. In previous eruptions, they uh, did some experiments with this because it was thought that um, even though at the time the eruption wasn't endangering any critical infrastructure, it would be just a really good learning experience how how to make them in a way that is effective. We have to wait and see what happens really to sort of um, decide what kind of research we can do and what would also be useful to respond to the crisis. Uh, generally speaking, my research starts after the eruption has started and I'm particularly interested in when those gas clouds reach populated areas, how they impact the air quality in those towns.